everyone, welcome to another gameplay review on the Vakayu Gameplay Channel. And as we have buffed Talia Jungle, as we have a bit of posturing with the Sheshwani, freshly nerfed and a ward on the red buff, which we know exists. Now, the buffs on Q, base damage increase, but it's a spam spell, which means obviously you get spam benefit. But the big one is obviously the E, having that 25% increase on damage to monsters, increasing our farm ability. Which is obviously, that has been her issue, right? Like, she's a great full camper, aggressive jungler, so on. But she hasn't really, you know, thrived in terms of, like, full clearing or really having any ramp-up speed in terms of a clear if she doesn't get PvP stuff going. So now you do have that option. Now, it won't change your first rotation here, obviously, unless you are going with the E, which we are here, chucking this one over the wall. You see that very nicely done. If you were going with, say, a W second, you wouldn't get the benefit until you do your second quadrant, all right? So now with the E second, obviously the bonus damage, we can speed up nicely. The overall speed increase we're looking at, because that's what you're worried about here as we have the Dark Harvest rune set. We're looking at about a 7 to 8 second increase in speed, which is meaningful, and I'm pretty sure that higher level Atelier's will increase that as we optimize and uh, carry on going. Now the Sishwani is going to be doing her blue side, crossing at 233 versus Atelier, who's already like 5, 7 seconds ahead of her, or 5 seconds ahead of her, and we did go leashless on the Raptor Pit. So... Let's see what this champion can do with these new buffs, because sometimes a champion that does a lot of damage is really, whoo, really broken OP, uh, but they struggle to clear. They don't really get to play the game because they don't really get going, right? But now she can get going, she can full clear pretty decently, as we're seeing here, we should be able to see exactly what she can dish out. The win rate. We're going to obviously keep our eyes on it, it's the first day, I'm not going to say anything, but she was already performing well in Hilo. She was already like 52, 53% plus before. So I'm really intrigued to see what this is in a few days. But this build, obviously, as you saw in the thumbnail, big mega win rates at this particular stage. And the Pike and Jin chilling in the bot lane. We have our Rel quality of life adjustments with the Zaya. We're full clearing here. We're looking at a leashless suboptimal clear uh, with one smite in pocket. So we can chain together that at 334. So this is slow. You should not be this slow. There's a reason for this. There's a trick that you can do with Talia. You can, before your buff is going to spawn, right? Do three worked grounds before the blue buff or before the red buff or whatever, and then you can just spam your Q2 at low mana cost and significantly higher frequency. As we see, the WE combo is still good and strong, and obviously the reworked ground, sorry, the E ground here, the pebbles, right, the pebbles, when you're dashing on that, they stop you and stun you. So very huge to know that and pay attention to that if you're the Sejuani here. Don't get E'd and then try Q because you're not going anywhere. So you use your works ground here, three slots, right? And then you can chuck boulders at the monster and you clear actually amplifies a lot quicker. So that wasn't done here as we started on Raptors, but Sashwani, I don't know who she's who she's trying to fake out here. We can see this. Um, I know she's trying to go for this tiller. She's going for the double scuttle. That's what we're focused on here. We cross mid lane. Envision, don't care, didn't ask. Go straight for the crab. We take that one. This is what she's great at. Full clear, double scuttle, gank the side lanes. We chuck out the E, so there's nowhere for the clear to go. We'll hit our Q here, so we will get the kill, which is beautiful. The E quality of life buff they did last year, huge, man. Huge, because now people are afraid to... They can't dash the other direction. It's great for resolution as well as I just click down and see the Jin uh, <laughs> almost kill the Rel. And because the clan can't go in that other direction, we can try and posture him into a W combo onto it. But it doesn't really matter. We get the kill anyway. So this is kind of a nice little switch, right? Because when I started grinding the Talia and everyone was grinding Talia when they made her a jungle in 2018, the big problem was it was so strong and so difficult, obviously. She still is difficult. Like, she's not easy to play. But you just had to get going early. You didn't really full clear, right? Like, that wasn't a thing you thought about. And while over the years I've changed her and we have been able to do that, this extra damage is a way of buffing her in the jungle without giving her back the passive movement speed, right? Without making her too obnoxious. Because what happens is they give her too much movement speed, she rotates too quickly, her ult was always an issue with that as well, and then she would one-shot you anyway. So you have to kind of choose, do you want farming speed or speed speed? Because if they give her both, she just becomes so difficult to deal with. And even then, right now, I don't feel like this is going to be something impossible to handle. I think we'll be okay. But I think people are going to see her more often than not now and be like, oh, well, she does a lot of damage again. And it's very difficult to deal with uh, as a mobile champion. This is something I love, something I talk a lot about in coaching and in the courses and in the private Discord here. You know, full sequencing down, looking and assessing for ganks, nothing available, take a scuttle. Look here, okay, try and get the double scuttle if the enemy also paths down. Gank the side lane here as well. So you've had impact at all three lanes. Now... 
you can stay out and do everything as we've done, right? That will give us a six as it does. And then you can lane gank in the bottom side. The idea though is to base either after this and then do this whole thing again, or stay out for the Krugs Raptors base. And now you can come down to Wolf's Grump, but you can also come down to the bottom lane before Wolf's Grump, right? Depending on the volatility of the lane. Here we've decided to stay out without spending any gold. And from this, if you track in this as Wani, you know she's gonna be in the area. And if Pike leaves his ADC like this, right? We can just ult in. Hello, Jin, and take the kill. We block off the Sichuan. We chuck the E out as well, just in case. Pike's now out of position. To 2v3, there's no talent. What are you going to be doing, Pike? Nothing? Exactly. Now we can go back to base. Would I recommend necessarily for everybody else? See, Would I recommend for anybody else to kind of stay out this long? No. But against a passive, supportive, tanky, Wincon-style jungler... I, I don't really have an issue with it. It's more like if you're going to go fighting in rivers and crabs and things like that. We'll get the stun from the Sejuani. We can obviously play off of that as well. We're a little oom, though. Uh, <laughs> the pebble. <laughs> Good old cute. That was a huge quality of life buff. I loved it. Does Jin try something here? Does Jin try something? Yes, he does. And it's water, too. So for me, always just walk all the way the other direction. Just absolutely run away. Remember, there's a talent against you that you got to track as well. But yeah, this is brilliant. So I started talking about something else, but I figured I should probably just clarify a few things about the boulder toss. Because this quality of life was so nice, as the chat box is in the way there, you can see that the mana cost is less, right? And it has 50% less cooldown, which means you can truly spam that on that first clear. That's the whole idea behind it. But look at the damage, right? We're looking at five rocks that each deal 146, which is great. But the boulder also stuns monsters for three seconds. So you're not taking damage, you're getting a spammable spell, and... They're stuck in space, so you don't have to waste time kiting. You can just really focus on DPS, and that's why this is a little fast, but it's also why it's so good in other situations now, versus having like a really, I don't know, it was like a chucking pebble thing before. It was really useless. But this boulder is something that's super fun to use, really made her interesting last year when they changed that, and obviously makes the clears a little more interesting if you actually use that trick. Pay attention to the main channel. I'll show that in the main channel video, I think, actually. Coming Saturday. Probably do Tealist tomorrow. Special video on this kind of stuff coming Saturday. So out of base here, we're 4 zero, zero. we have the Leandries, that's one buy again. Would I recommend people to kind of stay out that long by themselves? No, I would not, but if the play presents itself and the enemy jungle is not a threat, the ADC is by himself, don't say no to the opportunity. But if you based off the Raptors, you'd be in the same situation, so. All good, in the neighborhood. We go ahead and do the uh, Krugs into the Raptors. Now we really, really unfortunately are on a <laughs> getting shoved out of the the uh, pit here. We're keeping our spaces to go in the Aatrox, who actually still survives. We're able to kill a bike. Now this is one. He's going to show up here. Uh, we're going to have a nice E by the set, who's going to kill the Skull guy. And Sejuani will fall too. Who is going to get to the Herald? Should we be able to... Oh, oh I was going to say, are we going to be able to get there? And no, no, we're not. So use your E correctly. Use your W E combo beautifully. And remember to keep the DPS up on your worked ground and also non-worked ground. Uh, really an active champion all the time, right? All the time. And my biggest suggestion to most people on um, Talia is, and I think that's actually not a bad play for blue team. Like, I would have preferred them not to die, but, you know, at least it denies a Herald on a snowballing game. There you go, see? That's a WE combo right there. Beautifully done. So I'd recommend that you take your, uh, what's it called? Uh, auto cast thing. Pike shows up over here. We can go back to this. So yeah, the advice is use your W without the self-cast on, right? Because basically then you can actually angle it the direction really accurately. If you leave on the auto-cast, self-cast, whatever it is uh, on, then it just, it's a bit more clunky, right? A bit more automated and it's almost like you want to turn off some driving assists, right? In certain racing games or in actual some cars at the moment, just to have you a bit more control when you're driving. And that just makes your W a lot easier to, to really uh, use. And that's important considering you want to hit the W and then put the E right beneath it so you get the burst proc. And then they can't dash anywhere because they're stunned, and if they do it, they're stunned again, and you're chucking them with Qs. Really nice champion. It's a strong champion. It's a fun champion. Obviously, close to the wall with your rock synergy. We do have ultimate available. And come on, stop the base. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my, you see the pings from the Talia? Come on, man. Just stop the base. Like, I'm right there with ultimate. Wake up. And now you look at the clear speed, right? This is where you see the ramp up. Obviously, we always have ramp up farming speed on Talia and all these junglers. But when you give them a percentage increase, that translates forever. And so that keeps getting faster and faster by the same order of magnitude. And for now, Red Quadra done. 
Looking mid lane, if the Talon and everyone's bot lane fisting, you cut it and shove this, take some more plates. Meantime, we cut the map, no camps are up on the blue side because we did that before resetting. Right? So? Pike is out of position, level 5 in 11 minutes, oh dear. Sejuani shows up, we're level 9. Old does hit the ADC. We're ulting to get in the way here. We chuck our E in this particular point before to avoid any escapees. Now they can't go in here if they do have dashes. Then you can use your W on a guaranteed hit, and now you can keep your spacing through the pike. You remember with Talia's Q, you're dancing, right? You're dancing left and right the whole time, lateral movements. It's a really good skill for people who play Graves as well to learn because a lot of Graves players don't think about the lateral or slightly forward lateral movements on E for true grip passive stacking, and also just staying with an auto attack range, like moving around the arc. A lot of them kind of always forward or back, like you, in Kindred too. You don't have to always go forward or back, guys. You can go side to side. And side to side, within range, equals you keep hitting spells and auto attacks. So mechanically, it's really good on Talia. It, she teaches you a lot about that side to side movement. And keep that when you go and play your Kindreds and your uh, uh, Graves. This is, and uh, we see here, oh, come on, come on. <laughs> That's a pain of Talia. Because your, your combo is a little bit slower out, um, we should be able to see the lateral movement there. Because of the... God damn it, set. That was a dead talent. Like, he was absolutely dead. You didn't need to ultimate. man. This is the problem with Talia. You do have that sort of issue, which is why, as we all remember, the original Pantheon plus Talia combo was so fun. Guaranteed stun into a guaranteed WE combo. Now we have the... 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 the Kled. Uh, going really ham. I mean, they got her. She died. But that's what will happen. When you play Mage Jungle, they tend to want to go all in on you when you are um, this fed. So, Shadow Flame Landry's great combination. Obviously, you can go uh, Zonius as necessary, but typically we do like... To, we're going to go Zonius here because we have a lot of all-in with the Pike and the Talon. But... We do like a death cap, we do like a void outside of that. Typically that will be your build. Now we see here the Zaya moving up to the mid lane as Rel is dead. So yeah, there is that Rylai's tech as well that you can use, which obviously guarantees your stun. You know, you slow him, get the WE much easier, or you slow him and you get to hit all your cubes easier. Against highly mobile comps, it can be something good. Also the HP is nice as well. But in general, Landry's, Shadow Flame, Zhonya's, death cap void, and now our team are straight up inting our lead. That's fantastic. Hooray. Huzzah. Who could have foreseen this? Guess we will have to 1v9. Let's see how we do it. Right. Stopwatch obviously gained, as I said. It's in the eye. Just get rid of that. Dragon is available. No real focus on dragons, obviously, unless we need to. See, here we see the talent. So we want to chuck out that E in front of us. So, you know, he's kind of doomed if he moves. Try and hit the W. Kind of tough on the talent, but uh, the disengage is enough. Holding your W... On Talia is really important when it comes to being against the Rengars and things like this, yeah? If he's going to jump on your team, you want to have a W as a knockup, as a knockback and things like that. And getting really good at hitting it with anticipation, that's a trick. Here you can also do this over the wall. You have the Leandro stick as well. And Chain CC is the best thing. Like if you have a Talia on your team and you have point and click champions like a Maokai, like a Rel, you've got yourself uh, the Pantheon, and that's what you want. You want to guarantee, right, the W knockback into E and obviously the follow-up Q spam, as always. Chuck in a few orders as necessary. That's what we like. Always works the best. Now you're noticing the river control we have here, right? Like, we could be farming a bit more. Could go ahead and do this, 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 and this, and whatever. But we see there's an objective on the top side. Now we see Jin out of position, so we use our R to knock him back a little bit, which guarantees our W knockback. The E was a little bit misplaced, but hey, beautifully executed. No hesitation. Out of position, let's go. That's something that I don't see enough from, from Talia. They seem to always hold their ult for, like, a rainy... Uh, day where you need to, you know, border up your, your zones or something like this. But... Do we not have the... Oh, it is working, okay. The Herald announcement thing just doesn't work at all. Never has really, has it? They should fix that. Right, please, can we have like a little Herald thing? It's a bit more obvious. Thank you so much. Now, as I said, could be doing these things, but there's an objective. So we rotate there, we make the pick, we take the objective. Now they're all dead, so we move into their zone and we take their stuff. We have someone dying here, so we go, ADCs, man, am I right? Take all of this, set is 3, 4, and 1, Aatrox is 2, 5, and 4, ADC is 5, 6, and 5, and we are just going to roam around with our support and make picks. That's it. Hello, Talon. Level 11, don't have uh, enough for Zonias, but we don't really want to finish our Zonias. The E, they're a little presumptuous, but 
it don't matter. Nicely done again. This is where the champion thrives. You are an omnivore. You scale, you get strong, you have wave clear, you have pick potential, you have DPS, you have burst. What doesn't she have? Inherit mobility? Oh, she's a little fast, no dash, but she's the anti-dash button, so who cares? And that's the way to think about it. She does what you need, as long as you know what you need, when you need it, it will be provided. Now, there's a deep ward here, obviously, we do have a dead talon. We'll do a little bit of a Q-poke to have a look here. Works ground gives us a stun on the boulder. The set's in a little bit of a precarious spot himself, so we just keep focusing on the Gromp, as all junglers tend to do when they shouldn't. Uh, okay, well, didn't see that. Clegg goes to the bottom side. We'll finish off the wolf camp here. Hopefully she doesn't take this. Uh, I guess... I guess on high yellow you kind of have to sometimes, but try and focus your own a golden experience and make sure you take that. We can do the Krugs over the wall. If there's nothing to do here, do the Krugs over the wall. Wait for your team. But yeah, we got the Zaya. We can shadow. We can go deep. Here we go. Hello, Jin. We're going to chuck out an EQ and hit absolutely nothing. So that's a bit... <laughs> I'm talking about hitting nothing. It's Smithy over here with a Sejuani ult. Now Kled's going to go in and we're going to get hooked back by the Pike. With the disengage button with our E. Look at that E. Look at the E. Just absolutely zoning their entire team. We have the knockback button as well. Now the town's going to go in and kill us and get the shutdown. So a, a little bit of a boo-boo there with the spells missing initially and over committing with Aatrox down here and set up here. But you got to try and push the game forward, I suppose. But it is what it is. Aatrox goes ahead and does the Krux. That catches mid-wave. Very healthy contributions. Let's jump forward a little bit because nothing happens for a while. We all respawn, take some of our camps. Uh, here we go, out of position. R, hello. Oh, that was a very, very, very good W that was dodged by the Jin here. You saw that, right? But then he goes in, we've got spammable spells in the Q backline, there you go. That's all you're looking for, right? Anyone with CC that can group them up, even without any other spell available, the Q does so much damage. Like, what are we looking at now, just for context? 295 per rock, right? Per rock. And that's insane. That's five rocks. And the boulder now does 560, which is scaling 95% with your AP. So, use your rock ground and use your boulder. We're falling back to the dragon here because I think she wants to do it. But nobody else seemed to. And I suppose you could shadow the scenario. Hi, Jin. <laughs> no, his flash. Like, he has to respect it. He has to respect it, absolutely. Uh, we're looking at what on this one? Obviously, this does no damage anymore, but 437, uh, right? The stones detonate when the enemies are knocked through them. Uh, 204 additional, so there you go. Super huge. Huge damage profile. And obviously, this passive is cute. Doesn't it look that passive? Any modern champions understand what that is? It's a sentence. That's it. We don't have essays. We don't have 10 years of, uh, of Hollywood scripts that never see movies. Um, some say... Most players have never even finished reeling. Just a sentence explaining something simple that the champion does. Who remembers that? And that's because Talia, while she still feels like a new champion, because she never really got played enough, she isn't. She's an older champion. So, let's see what we can do to win this game, because we kind of want to close. We have a huge lead. It looks like we're slow to end. And we are slow to end. What are we at? 19 stacks on the harvest? Whew. Rarely see that nowadays. Heads out of position. Could collapse in on him. Zai's out of position. They could collapse in on her, which they will. Flash respect. We'll go topside here. Again, using the E to zone, using the W to follow up. You don't always have to go for the combo. We have here the uh, brrr, huge, huge, um, what is that thing called? Blasting cone from the map. We can just do Baron now, no? No Kled, dead Talon. Set and Aatrox aren't really interested in playing the game, but we don't really need them. We just need to make sure we keep getting picks ourselves. Let's go! Free Baron? Quite fast, actually. We have ult to rotate to the Jin, who now we know has no flash and knockback from the ult. Just chuck the Qs over the wall. Come on, Set. Come on, baby. You can do it. Q over the wall? Ah, he's too quick. Unlucky. Unlucky. Anyway. This is pretty good. Now Talon's going in on our... Zaya, so we'll do that Q knockback into the E here as well. Eats up some of those pebbles. Keep kiting in the back line here. Use your boulder, obviously. There you go. Beautifully done. You see how difficult it is for people to get onto you. And we still have our stopwatch. We still have our stopwatch. So we upgraded to Mejais because we hadn't used the stopwatch. 
So if you finished, you, you know, you have enough gold for Zonias and you've used the stopwatch, you can get the Zonias. But if you still have the stopwatch, there's no real reason for you to upgrade to the Zonias because then you're just wasting that component. So upgrade to Mejais, especially if you're doing very well. Save your, your stopwatch for more optimal situation. And if you never get there, that's fine. And you can upgrade because you want needlessly large rods. But for now, like you see here, you know, we can finish the Zonias and we'll get a needless, right? It's exactly what we do. Ideally, we don't want to be in that situation, but really, will you be, actually? You most of the time find a way to use a stopwatch. So, here we go. Pled, trying to run away, runs into the rel. Nicely done. Scion Gaming. Jin's in the mid lane, obviously still has no flash. We'll be up a little bit soon. We have here the Talia queuing, queuing, queuing. This is where you really like the Rylize, you know what I mean? That's where the Rylize can be really nice and useful in these particular situations. Oh, <laughs> he dies. Aatrox nerfs were good, actually, I think. Like, the buffs were definitely way too much, but the nerfs were... Felt like they were a, a good shift, actually. Without really undoing a lot of the good work. Again, we'll have to pay attention to the win rates. Zaya takes the red. We'll pick it up ourselves. Talon's now split pushing in the mid lane. I would like, like to see a bit more push here. I mean, like, there's two or three here. We should just be shoving a little bit. We've got the Aatrox here with Baron. I, I understand having a little bit of fun here, but... This just draws out the game way too much. You know, obviously we don't know their whole team is going to be there, but I have Baron, I would like to use it. See, now we get to use the Zhonya's. Uh, <laughs> Zai is in a bit of an odd position. We'll chuck the E there, knock back away from us. There you go. Well done. Easy fight, easy clap. Shove this wave up. Aatrox kills the Cloud on the top side. Push this wave up as well. Nice and fast. Well, that's a Zaya, but we're doing the same thing. You can do that too. If your <laughs> ADC goes to the mid lane, you can do that as well. Excuse me. I was just zoned out a little bit because I'm used to having to push the side waves myself. And or in coaching all the time. No one ever pushes them, so you just kind of almost autopilot yourself into that position. But yeah, either way, it doesn't matter. Push it up, push it up, push it up. This is a three inhib game? No. They're going to be respawning. We're looking at maybe... Two inhibs, I would be careful here. Knock back on the W there, you see that? The Zaya's burnt her ult here. Uh, we can ult by the Sejuani. Yeah, you don't really want to die here at all. Knock back into the E. It's okay. It's okay. Still, you can see it. You can see the game swinging in the other direction. Baron is spawning, an Elder is spawning, a Soul is spawning. Three inhibs, we can get this and get out maybe. Yes, we can. All right, now we want to leave. Jinru doesn't hit. Sejuani goes back in. Set says, not today. And we have Rel in front of us, so we can use that as well. Stand by the Rel into the W. Whew, close. Very close. Dragon is available. Talon's going to keep following us here. We do have everything up. <laughs> I like AoE spells like that. Camo champions have no counter. I don't think we're going to necessarily get the dragon, though. Three inhibs. Pike is here. We could. Now we could. Yeah, we could. Hold up just a little bit. Hit the healing plants. Get that. Pike hits the hook here. Put our W down. Oh, sorry. Our E down. Then our W disengage again. Chuck your boulders. Chuck your Qs. Chuck your Qs. Chuck your Qs. Ugh. It's so good. When your positioning is good and you have someone to sit in front of you, it's just a beautiful combination. For you. For the enemy team, as I said, not fun. Really nicely done. That will be the third dragon. Back to base. Death cap finished. This is where we like to sit. If we have no Mejais or zero stacks, you can just go Void. Can go Rylize if you don't really need the Void. Can obviously go into a Banshees if you need that as well. There is the E zone into the W, but he's unstoppable, so it's avoided. We're just going to pay attention to that as well. And hopefully, we can win the game here. From this push. So, the farming tempo... 227 uh, CS here. I liked it. You could see it was ramped up nicely. The first clear didn't really showcase that, but that is faster as well. The mid-game, late-game farming is very good. The pick potential is good. The DPS is good. It just allows her to get enough gold and stats to actually play the game properly and to play the game with a high level of efficiency. You know, and that's always a problem when you have these kinds of champions because, like, we're looking at, what, 6,000 damage from the Leandris here, Shadow Flame, 4,500 damage. 25 stacks of Mejais. The champion is just a monster champion. Can now clear a lot faster. He's strong. Vakaida GG for all your coaching needs and courses and memberships. And I'll see you all in the next one.